Hello everyone! In this video we tell you about how to grow tomatoes in November. Cut up some fresh organic tomatoes into slices. These are the seeds, who play a minor role alongside the angels at the bottom. Fill it up with this soil mixture. To start your seeds, you can use seed starting mix, or simply make 60% garden soil and 40% compose. Place these slices on the potting mix of these. Now covered with the final layer of seam soil mix water well now keep the pot in partial shade and then the seed starts to germinate. Place the pot in direct sunlight or undergrow lights. The seedlings are then 6 to 8 inches long. You can then transplant them to their final location. To make the potting soil, use very green soil that is rich in organic matter. Tomato plants require fertile soil to produce a good harvest. Dig a mixture of 60% garden soil and 40% organic compost for this. Choose a container or poly bag with a diameter of at least 18 to 20 inches and a depth of 15 to 18 inches. The greater the size, the better. Fill the bag halfway with potting soil. Ensure it has edge holes. You can order unit smart bags with no details on this screen and in the description box down below. Take the plans from the ceiling board using air travel. Make sure you don't break any rules while transplanting. Keep the root ball intact to avoid transplant shock. Dig a 6 to 8 inch deep hole. Remove any lower leaves from the ceiling and plant it as deeply as possible because it has the ability to sprout additional roots along the body stem. These extra roots help to strengthen the plant, allowing it to support more fruit while filling the hole with this soil. The plant should only be a few inches above the soil. Keep a 6 to 8 inch gap between two plants and containers and a 1.5 to 2 foot gap in the ground covered with soil and bed down, lightly water them throughout the growing season, continuing to water thoroughly whenever the top inch of this soil is day after transplanting. Place the bag in the shade for two days. Allow the plants to recover from transplant shock before gradually exposing them to discernment. Tomato plants require 5 to 8 hours of direct sunlight per day to grow and eventually produce fruit. Water at least once per day to keep the top layer of this iron evenly moist. As the tomato plants grow, you'll need to supplement the plants for the dig logistics. At least 4 to 5 feet tall. Install wooden stakes or two sticks at least 4 to 5 feet tall, with tidy stems loosely tied to them, with twine or strips of fabric vital to metal flowers that are typically pollinated by wind and occasionally by bees. However, a lack of air movement or a low insect population can slow the natural pollination process. You may need to hand pollinate your tomato flowers in this case. Simply shake the flower gently to distribute the pollen grains. Tomato plants typically produce fruit between 35 and 60 days after planting. After 18 to 20 days, add organic compost to the soil as it will give your plants an extra boost to grow lots of tomatoes rather than on the bottom of the plant. The key to tomato success is to consistently water your tomato plants. Keep the soil moist, but not wet. Too much water, and your plant roots will rot. Too little water, and your plants will become weak. Water the soil rather than the foliage. As a result, the skin suffers from a variety of diseases and fungi. It's ready plants with homemade organic pesticide made from nimoy garlic extract and chili extract every six to eight days to keep the best and insects away. But as the tomatoes grow bigger and heavier, as the tomato ripens, grasp the fruit with your hand and gently pull it from the stem. Harvest your tomatoes once they start turning red and ripe shop sizes can be used to snip little meadows off from the branches. A fully ripe tomato will be softer than an unripe tomato. You should always rinse your tomatoes with water before eating them. This will assist in the removal of any fertilizer residue, dirt, or bacteria. Water early in the morning to ensure that plants have enough moisture to last through a hot day. Water thoroughly for the first few days after planting tomato seedlings or transplants. During the growing season, water with about 2 inches, 1.2 gallons, per square foot per week. Deep watering promotes a healthy root system. Avoid watering in the afternoon and overhead. Water plants at the soil level to avoid splashing water on the leaves. Mulch five weeks after transplanting to keep soil from splashing on the lower leaves and to control weeds. Two to four inches of organic mulch, such as straw, hay, or bark chips, should be applied. Before planting, you should have worked some compost into the soil and added some bone meal to the planting hole. Side dress plants every two weeks with liquid seaweed, fish emulsion, or organic fertilizer. Beginning when tomatoes are about one inch in diameter, some folks say golf ball size. 
Pull back a few inches of mulch and scratch two to three tablespoons fertilizer around the drip line of the plant if you're using an organic granular formula like Espoma Tomato Tone. Four to seven ten or three to four six. Replace the mulch and water it in. Continue fertilizing tomatoes every three to four weeks until frost. Avoid using fast-release fertilizers and high-nitrogen fertilizers. As previously stated, too much nitrogen results in lush foliage, but few flowers and little fruit. Determinate tomatoes, also known as butch varieties, grow to a height of 2 to 3 feet. These varieties produce a large number of ripe tomatoes at once. They don't put on much leaf growth after fruiting and only fruit for a relatively short time. They are generally more productive earlier than vining varieties and not later in the growing season. Staking or caging are not required for determinate tomatoes. These plants are ideal for small spaces and containers. The majority of paste tomatoes are determinate, which is ideal for making sauce and canning. Determinate tomatoes are ideal for canning because they produce at the same time. Indeterminate tomatoes, also known as vining varieties, produce the most mid to late season slicing tomatoes throughout the summer and until the first frost. Because indeterminates have more leaf growth, their production is more evenly distributed throughout the season. Staking is required for indeterminate tomatoes. They are perfect for large gardeners. Indeterminate beefsteak and cherry tomatoes are common. Plant tomato varieties that are disease resistant. Disease resistance codes for tomatoes are listed on seed or seedling packets. For example, F equals Fusarium wilt. Rotate crops in the same location at least every three years. Planting other members of the Solanaceous family in the same area should be avoided. Potato, pepper, and eggplant are examples. Make sure the soil drains well. Always incorporate compost or organic matter. Consistently water. Do not go overboard or underwater. Blossom and rot can be caused by uneven watering. Remove infected plants. Unfortunately, infected plants must frequently be removed and discarded, or the disease will overwinter. The soil should be solarized. If the problem is severe, tomatoes grow best in sandy loam soil, which is a medium type soil with good drainage, but they can also grow in clay soil if not waterlogged. Weekly feeds of an organic liquid fertilizer, seaweed based ones are ideal, or a homemade compost tea, brewed in a large container from a variety of ingredients, such as crushed eggshells, chopped up leafy greens, that would otherwise be put in the compost bin. For example, outer cabbage leaves, and a shell full of manure, all mixed up in plenty of water, stirred daily, and left to brew for at least a week. 